In our previous video, we discussed how you can take amino acids and link them together using peptide bonds. And I finished off by saying that when you do so, the amino acids are no longer amino acids, they're called peptides. What I have shown here on the next page is what I would call a tetrapeptide. That is a peptide with four amino acids used to make it. And we have to be able to take a look at peptides and proteins, which are just simply longer peptides, and analyze all of the pieces of them and kind of pick them apart so we can know what was used to make them. And that takes a little bit of skills to do. First of all, how do I know that this is a tetrapeptide, that it has four amino acids in it? Well, we do a little analysis on it. And what we can do is, for instance, go and find every peptide or amide linkage that we created to make this. And we can use our pen to kind of put a little slice down through them as if we're breaking it apart again. Every time we find a peptide like that and break it, and once we've done that, we can circle back and find the alpha carbons for the four amino acids. Remember, an alpha carbon always is going to have the same four groups around it. A nitrogen from an amine, a carbon from a carboxylate, although in this case the carboxylate is buried in the peptide bond over here, a hydrogen, and then the variable group, which we'll call R here. So, now we can see that we have four amino acids, and we have to learn a little bit about some terminology of peptides. The first thing we want to do is point out again that once we know where the alpha carbons are, everything that is attached to that alpha carbon uh, on the variable group is what we're now going to refer to as side chain. So the variable group and side chain uh, is really the same thing. And we call them side chains because they hang off the side of the chain. And that's probably the terminology that I'll use from now on. I would like to point out that everything else that is not side chain is what we call main chain. And we'll use those terms from time to time as we talk about proteins and peptides. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, I want to tell you about the directionality of peptides. It's a crucial issue that we're going to be talking about for a long time. And we can start by looking at this peptide and noting that the first amino acid that we had has an amino group that is not connected to anything else. And the fourth amino acid has a carboxylate that is not connected to anything else. That gives us some asymmetry in the peptide, and that means that every peptide has a beginning and an end. Now I can tell you, by convention, we use what's called the amino terminus as the start. And this is sometimes just referred to as the end term. Uh, that is sort of the shorthand for that. The carboxy terminus is the end. And likewise, we sometimes simply refer to that as the C term. Now, the overall directionality of this peptide is from N to C. And we can use that analogy we used before about trains to say that a train typically starts with a locomotive and ends with, say, a caboose. So this is the kind of idea we have here. The N terminus is equivalent to the locomotive, and the C terminus is the caboose. Okay, now that we've worked on those basic terms, I'd like to go down and do a little practice. I'd like you to uh, stop the video in a moment and uh, answer the following questions or tasks. First, we'd like to have you circle the alpha carbon of lysine. I'd like you to put a box around the side chain of phenylalanine. And I would like you to write in the name or the three letter code of the residue that is two residues and terminal to glycine. That's kind of a strange way to use the 
word n terminal, but uh, see if you can figure out that challenge. So go ahead and stop it and use the peptide above to carry out these three tasks. Feel free to go back to your 20 amino acids to identify the appropriate ones as you do these tasks. Okay, I hope you took some time to do this. It's really important to practice these skills. First thing I'm gonna do is, again, go down, chop through the peptide bonds so that I can identify each amino acid, and we can identify in the center of those the alpha carbons. Now, let's go and look at the side chains. The side chains are these pieces that are connected to the alpha carbon. And this is the side chain of a lysine. So the first challenge is going to be answered by circling that carbon right there. That's the alpha carbon of lysine. What about the side chain of phenylalanine? Phenylalanine is a phenyl group attached to an alanine. So the answer for that would be this one right here. Notice something. Uh, I did circle this carbon as well. That's part of the side chain. Sometimes people might just cut it off right here for the phenyl group, but it, the side chain actually includes that beta carbon as well. Now, for this last challenge, this is kind of a strange one. What is the name of the residue that is two residues, N-terminal to glycine? Let's point out, first of all, that this is the N-terminus and this is the C-terminus. So when I say N-terminal, I'm using that term as an adjective, meaning in the N-terminal direction. Here is the glycine. I know that's a glycine because it has a side chain that's just a hydrogen. So if I ask what residue is N-terminal to that, or two residues N-terminal to that, I'm going to count back from glycine toward the N-terminus. One, two. And at this point, I can see the side chain is a methionine. So the answer to this third strange challenge is met, or methionine. Now this last question uh, has reminded me that I forgot one item of terminology that we have to cover. You might have been wondering, what does it mean to have a residue? Uh, that really simply refers to the amino acids that are involved in a peptide or a protein. So, uh, you gotta understand, these are no longer amino acids. They don't have amines or carboxylic acids. So we no longer call them amino acids, we call them amino acid residues. And I'll just shorten that to residues. So I might say, how many residues are found in this peptide? And you would say, well, there are four amino acid residues. That should do it for the basic terminology, and we'll continue to practice these skills in class and on the online homework.